21st century. First, let me tell you good night and hope that by the time this reaches you, you'll be strong, hearty, and in good health. May the light from the stone stars shine bright upon your gravel path. May the breadfruit wealth you. I represent the godmother of these nine hard bat men and the one shingle stalwart shiro we have here from these big bright cardboard placards line up before you. And if I tell you that I'm proud, happy, and delighted about this whole thing, about this whole ringing business hit by the espionage. I wouldn't be telling you no lie. I wouldn't be telling you no lie. Cause a proud, happy, and excited, like bare neck teenager chicken, can't stop cluck, cluck, clucking like they're mad. And turkey cock, gobbledy gobble, gobbledy gobble, gobble, and gallifunctin. Dear 21st century, when the first come and ask me to say few little words, write song, bell, bugle, or dingle. The first thing I did I and um, when I was given the honor to do such an me, awesome thing me is I had to decide who would speak. And I was aware that if I spoke as Kamau Brathwaite, that it really wouldn't be enough for such an occasion. And as you know, I made a persona that it was a godmother, an old lady, who, who was given the honor to, to, to speak about these, these people. And by using a Bajan woman from the country, I was able to import into the poem the language of a variety of parishes and places. I was able to make references to things which, in a formal poem, I would not have been able to do. As you notice, the poem was a mixture of of traditional English and a lot of nation language, a lot of Bajan speech. For instance, one of the things that, you know, I was quite, rem I was quite surprised when I, I read the poem afterwards is that, for instance, I referred to, to Desi and Gordon as, as part of our hero, uh, hero's thing. And as it turned out, um, Desmond Haynes actually was at, the, was at that ceremony. And had there been more time and more preparation, I could have involved people like Desi into the poem itself. Oh, Nanny Greg, Rawl Parkinson, Desi and Gordon Greenwich, oh, the mighty Carew. Is all these drunk or starved or stave or broken, tortured or neglected to violence and barbarian, not Barbadian TV? that need love, that need balm, that need heroes. So that's why you see me here today, standing before you, trying to write this poem, like Beethoven, like Brudegan, like Grantly into a hundred years of granite, like Busser into bronze, Prescott the pioneer, Duncan, the fearless rock dundo. Springer, the clock right water flowing from a firm foundation. Clement Payne, that second coming of the arrow flame. Frank Walcott marching in the rain like Frank by name and Frank by nature. And we two hero cricketers upon the list, Gary and Skipper Barrow. I was aware that you know, Gary 10 Wolf heroes is very inadequate in a way. Um, some people will say 10 heroes is too many. But the whole point is that when you begin to think of heroes, I mean, think of all those, those mothers 
I mean, the poem refers to, to a de drowning incident that took place at Brighton, for instance. To me, those little boys who went into the sea to save their children should have been celebrated on that occasion. And the poem tried to bring them into it. Because without the silent heroes, we don't really have a culture. I mean, we, we, we elevate certain people. In our case, we elevated nine men and one woman. But the real heroes of the country are those who, who have all those centuries toiled, who have, who have built up what we have now achieved today. So I sing the absent ones, the silent ones, teachers, nurses, police women, policemen but not teeth, the Christmas morning singers, the planters and the planners, fishermen, the crews going out upon the endless waters, the color of our fly, the fisherwomen selling fish, scales, fish scales, cavalli, all those who comfort the dying word with words, a touch without a word, a soft ride, who swim out brave to rescue the drowning, even if them going down, going down, going down themselves. All that black water into themselves and come up wet and without breath upon the anxious beaches of the coastline cause the sea don't got no back door. Midwives giving birth to the children of the valleys those whose houses fall down from their heads because they're hungry and not angry enough. Houses cut off like a criminal ham sandwich to their very foundations by the new highways of progress. I'm aware that if we, if we are going to celebrate our heritage, we also have to honor it. And if, and for the sake of progress, we begin to destroy the very environment that we are going to sing about, it becomes a very hollow shell. As I was driving through the country, I did see a physical case of a, of a house which had been cut in half practically by a road of progress, and that thing disturbed me immensely. The house was falling into the road of progress. And, and you know, I have a very strong sense that our younger poets are going to have difficulty eventually in writing about the island if it is screened out by, the, by a Berlin wall of, of cement. And I think we have to learn that as we develop the sense of hero and icon, we also have to develop the sense of the sacredness of the nature out of which those heroes came. And I turn to me God's son, the one you see there grinning from year to year in the back row. I turn to the boy and I say, Owen, that's how I just call it, you know, Owen. These people must think I is a half an idiot for something or other, or mad on a fast track, to think that a person in my station, a humble, God-fearing, God-mother from a pains based situation, could think she had the gall hill to come up here before all these people and say she's saying something like poem. But you know what? You know what? The boy turned to me and he said, look up, why are you getting so excited here about for mama? If all these heroes didn't have need a mother, they would never have been come into this world and born at all, 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 at all. And so could never have become neither hero out here neither. That's how the boy you see he dare to talk. Like a BWA burst water mains, or a where are the wells, or a fountain. I went to, you know, I was at the University of the West Indies, I was at Mona for 30 years. And during that time, I, I had the vision that I would like to create an archive, as I had always been doing, 
as a writer and a historian, I had a very strong sense that our culture needed to be preserved. You know that many times you come across situations where um, you go to a broadcasting station, for instance, and you hear that the tapes have been erased. They, they need to use them for something else. The BBC in the, in the 1950s did this wonderful Caribbean Voices program, and because of space considerations, they had to destroy all those wonderful tapes with the voices of George Lamming and Shea Keen and Bidya Naipaul. So what I did, as others of us started to do, was to try to collect everything that had to do with the Caribbean. And I, I, I built a house up in the hills of Irish Town, in which it was to become like a kind of depository for these things, which could then be passed on to the next generation. A hurricane destroyed that in 1988. And my problem then was how to continue that project. And um, I, I then left and went to live in New York and to teach at the university, the NYU New York University. And I had hoped that they would have acquired these archives as in fact they had shown an interest in doing. Although I was very hesitant about that because my natural instinct as a nativist is that these things should be in the Caribbean. And in a sense, I was pleased that they, they, they reneged on that, on that decision, that they did not take the archives. And then I came back to Barbados a few years ago. I took leave without pay in order to write a, a new long poem I'm doing. And the way you're sitting now, I discovered quite by accident that this was a perfect place for me, a place that I could perhaps rebuild what somebody had called the Library of Alexandria, you know, the whole effort of, of preserving some of the culture. Let me explain another thing. You know, there are things called public archives, and that is one thing, government official documents. But I think that unless the private individuals have their own idiosyncratic and personal collections. We still don't have a picture of our own culture. All of us have the responsibility of preserving what we have done. And too often, as you know, you hear people say, oh, we had all these letters, we had all these photographs, and we threw them out. The other day, someone came across in a crab hole somewhere, um, a whole collection of old black and white photographs somewhere in, in, um, in St. Peter you know, six men's bay area. And I think that unless we do this, we are not going to have, we're not going to have the basis for what we call our culture. We're not going to have the basis for the heroes. Or if somebody had collected, collected memorabilia from Bassa, from Hugh Springer, from, 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 from Sarah Ann Gill, we would have really had a much better start with this movement of heroes. So that I felt very strongly that we, we must do this kind of thing. I came here and I, I made plans to use this particular site, which was quiet and um, beautiful at the same time, to, to start to rebuild the archive. And within minutes of that decision, I was informed by government that um, they needed they needed this spot for progress, very much like the ham sandwich in the poem. Because it was a time, sirs, when the blue dark and a bright sky, no matter how we smiling, no matter how it seemed we happy, even though we only pulling out weeds, even though we but only surviving. When white was might and might was right, instead of being wrong or right, and today is a funny night. For this is one make heroes. The Almighty struggle against the ordinary pain. And when that ordinary pain income only from fresh and blood, sugar, stress, stroke, butter, and diabetes, tomain, dark eye, arthritis. But his breed into the very frame, food covered of the mind and skeleton by what them call history, by what them call the system. It is that that prevents the little children from playing attention out in the unlevel open playing field of the unleavened parishes. Heroes is when we begin to fight against all this against all that, 
and when we come to recognize that this same dark we prison in is half serious in it, and Orion, and constellations of the stream and sword and future. Dark warriors fighting for words and equal rights and dreamings, and a proper place to sleep in John Gay, Aline Land in Little England, and hauling a freedom fighting kite high up into the hot, clear hull at the unfailing sky waters of Easter on the hills and the brown pasture lands of the parishes, and Marianne Gill crying out in the trembling winds from the voice in the bull, when them catch a fire detail as she house and the lurch as she James Street Church. But she Methodist kite like a choir, singing higher and higher. Glory, glory, glory to God. I am a stranger to fear. Any nation that becomes a nation has to rename itself. In the same way that Adam, I think in the Garden of Eden, had to begin to name the trees and the fruit and the flowers. And every person, every country, every community that tries to define itself will always seek to give itself its own names. You know, I mean, the whole point about the Caribbean is that we have oh, the original names, the Amerindian names were all eroded, destroyed, eradicated, and we were given English, French, Spanish names. But as we come into our own nativist consciousness, naturally we try to rename things or return to old names. And the business of a national hero or a pantheon of heroes is essential because people need to have cultural ancestors. They have to have an idea of we have come from a certain position, we have come from a certain kind of achievement, we have certain ideals. And therefore, we set up certain icons that will give us that reflection. So I see nothing wrong with that. This happens all over the world. Uh, during the American Revolution, they set up their own pantheon of heroes. As you know, in West Africa, um, the same thing had to be done. People changed their names, for instance, from the Anglif anglicized versions of, of themselves, like my friend James Ngugi of Kenya, who gave me the name Kamau, incidentally. He, 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 under the pressure of his sense of independence, renamed, re, recall, reclaimed his own name of Ungugi Wationgo. And so that throughout the, the, the third world, you have this, 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 this movement of renaming. So I think that the first stage that an, a colony or former colony goes through is to gain its political independence. But political independence means nothing unless there is economic self-sufficiency, which is another problem which I wouldn't go into now, and also cultural awareness, a sense of cultural sovereignty. And we, um, about 20 years after our independence, are now moving into the phase of our sense of cultural sovereignty. We will need to name our own heroes. We will need to find our own heroes. We will need to decide what kind of language we speak. We need to decide what kind of national dress eventually we will have. We need, in other words, to try to start a definition of Barbados. But I go even further. I would think that in order to achieve a comfortable awareness of ourselves, we first of all have not only to name the heroes and identify them, but we have to begin to know the names of our trees and flowers. You know, we have to know the names of our beaches. You see, the whole thing is, is not a simple, um, it is not a patina. Yeah. We have to really begin to understand that the naming process of a hero is only part of a much larger process. People have to be aware of where they come from, the names of their origins, and then to have a sense of possession and love. Then we have to learn how to defend what we have, we have so named. We have to know that Barbados is a precious 
a precious possession which we cannot afford to lose, that we are willing to fight for it in the way that the Vietnamese, for instance, fought for their own heritage and their own territory. And I think that's the importance of the whole procedure, that we become a nation of patriots and matrons. We begin to understand that what we have is we own. So that's why you see me here today, standing before you, trying to write this poem like Beethoven, like Brudegan, like Grantley into a hundred years of granite, like Busser into bronze, Prescott the pioneer, Duncan the fearless rock dundo, Springer the clock bright water flowing from a firm foundation, Clement Payne that second coming of the arrow flame, and we two hero cricketers upon the list, Gary and Skipper Barrow. When Gary walk out from the field of battle, slipping on them batting gloves over his fingers and wrists, every little Bajan boy who watching he walking know now from today he could become a neurosurgeon or a sober. For every nation got its stars. Even more so when, as I say, the people got burdens and scars that can always heal even though we sit down by the waters of Babylon and weep. Some say that this whole thing like it's too late though, that we lost the toss, that the island debate like it's sell out already, all the land gone. And that all we heroes was fighting for, fighting for, fighting for, don't mean nothing no more in this pram, in this pram, in this prampalam land. Kadir, 21st century. We come here this evening to tell you that none of this ain't true. None of this ain't true. That me name what me name, that me name is me main, and it am is me own, and lion I mean. That winner men take you and am, them is nominate different and none. So Barbados, me yes, but your name. And that is what above all, all these heroes teach me, from Busser to Sagiri, is that things must always be done that can always be seen to be done in the best green interest of what some call the ordinary person. Freedom, justice, rights, equal partnership, and grace for what I call the sort of the earth, the salt of the earth, the blessed, the jewels, the sparrows of this place. So, dear 21st century, I don't know what you're going to say about all this when you come. But I say that we're making a good, clean start. The continuation of a good beginning of limestone, of all these thousand, thousand homes, a deal, pine, wallaba shingle, green heart and coral. For yes, yes, it a come. Tomorrow can done, but it come. Today from the past, let it present, like wind crop time, sweet showers and flowers that gone, to behold them in lights in the song. The ending of the poem is, is, a, is a very century. optimistic, um, you know, effort to make the point that, because earlier on in the poem, I had made the point that, you know, perhaps it is too late. That, that this effort to create the Pantheon is already being eroded by, by other factors. But in the end, the, the old lady of the poem felt that no matter what, there is always hope. There is always the sense of future. In fact, no culture can exist. No 21st century can come, no new millennium, unless there is a sense of, of juve, there's a sense of carnival, there's a sense of jump up. There's a sense of something that we can still achieve. And that's what the poem ends. It ends in a dance.
it ends in an effort to say that no matter what, we are going to use the, the survival rhythms of our heritage to move forward. Dear 21st century, let me go down, down the road. Let me come take this song. Let me go along down the road. Let me come take this song. Let me say, let me see, let me sing. Let me come go along down. Bam, balula, balang, bang, dung, let me come, let me come, take this song, go long, dung, let me sing, let me sing, let me song.